electrical assembly area here where we basically wire up the, the uh, parts that will go into the game. And uh, we have upstairs, which we'll tour in a little bit, uh, which where we build the boards and stuff for the game to go up in. This is a... Uh, isn't that cool? It's going to go out. This one's actually going to Callaway Park. Oh, where's our Canadian? And uh, believe it or not, this is a used game. So this was uh, two parts of a game, and we put it together as a used game for the customer. Refurbish it, repaint it. it this will go out Halloween looking like brand new. <laughs> and basically, it was uh, it was two different cabinets that we put together as one. Refurbished game here. We're starting on this one. We'll go to Six Flags over Texas. Uh, this is just parts of it here. You can see where it's dirty in the front and it's been relaminated, repainted in the back. Uh, so we do both used games, refurbishments, and new games here. Now, on something like this, will the park actually send you a game back to refurbish it and then you send it back a out? A lot of these are trade ins, they'll trade in for a new game. Uh, or or something and then you know it's a entry level game for us because the a refurbished game goes for about half the money of a new game so you get a, a facility that really can't afford a new game really don't know if they're if they need a new game or our type of game don't know how much money it's going to make they will start with like a refurbished game and it's a really good deal for them because when we get finished with it it looks like brand new from the outside it may have older electronics or something but cosmetic wise it looks brand new this is a this is a what we call an event trailer. Uh, it's coming together now. This will have a little basketball game in one side. It'll have a six unit water game in this side, and then it'll have a balloon game in this side. And this will all be wrapped and with ballys and everything. And basically, we sell this to a market where they rent them to schools and 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 festivals, small festivals, stuff like that. This area here is is where we assemble our arcade games. We normally assemble assembly or five or ten at a time and the components the sub assemblies are built in different places around the shop and then they're assembled here the cabinets are assembled in the back which I'll show you they're stuck what we call stuffed here everything goes into them they're fired up and then they're taken across the street and QC and wrapped up what's in, the uh, ready to ship what's the turnaround time from when you guys actually start a cabinet to when it goes out the door um, in a arcade piece it can be about a week if we're really concentrate on it we really like to flow them through in about two weeks but uh, if we really need the stuff and we and we jump on it it's about a week through okay. through so this is an area here where we where we mostly get everything packed up ready to go out to the customers we have to create everything this area over here we build our own uh, seats we build our own whack-a-mole hammers uh, whack-a-mole hammers we've been building for about 30 years now and uh, it's a pretty tricky process because you either get a hammer that lasts or you get a game that lasts. So if you get a hammer that lasts forever, the game don't last too long. If you get the game lasts forever, the hammer doesn't last too long. So it's a mix that we've, uh, we've finally, you know, over the years come up with a real good hammer and uh, we have a real strict manufacturing process of what we use and how we do that hammer to keep it together and keep, it, keep the game together. Fishing game, which will go in the building over here I just showed you. This was new at IAPA this year. The fish go around. Uh, you pick up any fish, and the fish has a RF tag uh, molded into it. And you have a reader, and you lay the fish up against the reader. It tells you what size prize, or in, in our terms, we, we say how heavy the fish is, and then we convert that into prizes. Uh, this, this top here is, again, we talked about used games. This is a used game. All the carpet has been ripped out of this, all been repainted, all been recovered, and this will be the top of the game that I showed you over there going to uh, the State Fair of Texas game. And basically, it opens up, and you have the racks and, and everything that goes in it. And, and you say, well, what, what's this for? Well, normally, a high stacker is sitting out in the open, and when it rains, you have to, uh, normally, to set up a high stacker, the employees have to take all the stock out, hang it all up, then when it rains, it, uh, they have to run it in real quick. And this one here, you basically just open it up. It's all flash. The shelves cut, stop short, so you basically just close it up or open it up and you're ready to operate. So we do a lot of things like this for just regular midway games to make them work better, work easier. This game here is going to Russia. Sitting on the dock ready to go to Russia. So we, uh, we ship this stuff all over the world. We have Canada, we have Russia, we have Mexico sitting in the shop now, along with our U.S. So this is our paint shop, and we, we paint everything in here from raw wood, the metal, the plastics, to fiberglass. 
Uh, I mentioned that the uh, toilet seats, here's the toilet seats that will go on the big trailer out front. Uh, another striker cabinet. And there they are. The mole heads are all out of a, of a used trailer that's sold and we pull them out, we paint them, we, we repaint them, we touch them up and everything and put, put them back. There. Go ahead on you. This is the department here that I think makes Bob Space Racers what it is. Besides the quality that we build the games and our games just make money and the people like them. This department here is the final touches on everything we put out the door. I think our art department is by far uh, most creative and uh, talented art department that I think a company could have. I think if you look around at some of the artwork, uh, it's just it's just phenomenal what we do. Uh, it's phenomenal the way it makes the games pop, and uh, it's also pretty uh, funny how we do it. We have one guy that creates all the art. We have my wife that approves the art, and uh, that's our art department. And, and our games really, really look good because of this art that goes on. We have a sign machine. We used to do silk screening. We used to do a lot of hand painting. You'll see some hand painted stuff, airbrush stuff. Uh, right now, everything's done in vinyl and comes off the uh, the printer now, so uh, there's not much much need for airbrushing and uh, some of the the old technique silk screen we used to use. Over here is all different heads that we that we made for the whack mole over the years. This is the little showroom here. We've uh, I think we beat on just about everything you can beat on, and uh, some of them are people's heads and faces and. Different animals. And we did the Simpsons area. Right. Okay, we, we worked on that for six months. Four and a half months was working with the licensed people on the on the on the on the product, what to do, and we had a month and a half to build it all. So, you know, for four and a half months, we're back and forth and back and forth, and we're changing wood, we're changing textures, and we're changing every piece on the game, or we're touching every piece. Two possible changes. So, you know, when you're working with licensing, it's tough. Uh, you know, you have a lot of hands in the fire. That particular one, we were working with Universal Creative, which is not bad to work with. We worked with them a lot over the years. They're familiar with us, we're familiar with them. But then, then we had to work with Fox Studios also. And so you had Fox Studios, Universal Creative, and VSR putting this package together. So there's a lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of detail, a lot of, a lot of things, samples going back and forth, getting approved. We have, we have a cat, we have a cat. That, um, you know, everybody know what a cat rack is, right? Where you yeah. Knock cats over. Well, they have a one of the characters in a cat that goes over. We we did that project in when did we open that? August, September, and we were going to put a different game in the cat rack until we got the custom cat made. And I said, well, why don't we just cut something out of out of plastic and put a decal over it for right now until we get the okay? Yeah, we'll do that. We just got approval a week, about two weeks ago, on the cat. We still have the wood on. Just got approval on the cat. Now that's not entirely the licensing default. It's the people that we're dealing with on the cat, which is an outside vendor bar, is just not used to doing custom work to that kind of detail to that kind of specification. We are uh, of that whole project. The only thing we had problem with was the cat, the cat rack, or whatever they want to call it, fuzzy guy or something. Basically, arcade games come off the CNC, go to the paint shop, the wood gets painted if it's need, need to be painted. They come here, they get, they get assembled, and then they take right from here and go over to the uh, area where I showed you where we stuff them. And they don't stay here very long. Basically, we build a pallet, we, build, we, we assemble the cabinet, we put on a pallet, we haul it over there. Once the, game is, the cabinet's assembled, it doesn't come off the pallet uh, ever until the customer gets the game. And uh, plumbing area here. And we do, like I say, we don't. We do a lot of things that uh, that make life a little easy for the customers, uh, make things better for players. And this is a this is a simple balloon dart game, and uh, we sell a lot of these. And basically, instead of having to blow up the balloon by hand, you basically just take the balloon and put it on the nozzle, push the nozzle in for about two seconds. It fills the balloon up and let and let it go. So. No more filling balloons and tying them up and, and everything like that. And you can see the amount of these stacked over here. And uh, 
you ship an awful lot of those out. I've never used a Swiss rim. I don't like it. Uh, you're giving a, a customer an indication that that's an 18 inch rim and it's really not. Mm -hmm. And uh, with 60 minutes and everybody has, has made people aware of that. Used to, the game would be here, you couldn't get on the side of it and you think it's an 18 inch rim. I never use them. I use a 15 inch rim. So I use a smaller rim, but it's not, it's completely oval. And you basically just adjust your merchandise. If you're have, if you're, the, the cost of sales we use is between 25 and 30 percent. So 25 to 30 percent of the revenue of the game goes out in merchandise is a good rule of thumb we use. If, it, if you're say using 40 percent in a long range mm -hmm. basketball, you can basically just go to $12 merchandise or $10 merchandise. You can maybe move back one foot. You can maybe raise the rim six inches. So there's a couple ways of doing it like that. But basic, we adjust it not so they can't win, mm -hmm. but to run 25 to 30 percent. And, uh, and then also you do it with pricing too. You can, you know, a lot of games now are two dollars, three dollars, five dollars to play. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to charge five dollars, you better make sure it's easy to win, mm -hmm. and you're you're putting some merchandise out with it, or uh, they're not going to play it very long. So we have used games here. We have new games. Yeah. And on our arcade line, we basically sell two types of games. We used to make everything here in the U.S. and the arcade market has changed so much and it got so price competitive that we now make a line of games contract manufactured in China, which uh, is not my wife's favorite thing to do, but it was either that or, or lose a, a big part of the market to not being able to compete for price. We call this Whack-A-Mole Pro. In a Whack-A-Mole, if you hit a head, it's either worth one point or ten points. When you play this game, you hit a head, you get zero, eight, nine, or ten. So the quicker you hit the head, if you hit it really fast, you get ten points. If you're a little slower, you get nine, a little slower, you get eight. Because everybody with a Whack-A-Mole wants to play it and see who's better, okay? With our scoring system, it's either one or ten, so you could get 300, I could get 300, game over. In this game, you might get 273, and I might get 262, so it really zones in on how fast you really are and how fast you can play the game. This looks like the hammer. Uh, got a lot of graphics and lights and fiberglass cabinet round. But this is the first time we've changed the whack-a-mole. And since we came out with it in the early 1980s from that cabinet to that, that style of game. But basically all the stuff that's up in here, the boards, we have, we build main boards, we build driver boards, we build relay boards um, for all the the games that you know house the electronics that we still use this type of system in so again we we also have board makers here that um to add to the carpenters plumbers and electricians also and we service every game that we've made since 1970 the first till the ones we're making today numerous electronic systems numerous um different types and we have to keep track of all that here customer calls in and basically says, I'm in so-and-so, what type of game do you have? Um, and we service it here. When he made the first game, the big thing was, was who was gonna get to the moon first, the Russians or the Americans? And the game basically had a little rocket, went down to the toy store, bought the rockets, assembled them together, and it, the yellow globes that we have at the, at the top that show a winner was actually round, looked like the moon, and basically that was called a space race. In, in addition to manufacturing, we also do consulting. Oh, sorry. Uh, like I mentioned, Universal Studios. We were in Universal Studios five years. We've done consulting for Six Flags. Uh, we've done uh, consulting this year. Uh, we actually do operations also. Our consulting can be anything from making a trip, telling you what we think is wrong with your games, to making a trip and completely redesigning your games area. Uh, this year in our operations, we're, we're running games in Clemington, New Jersey. Indiana Beach, Indiana, and we just took on a project in two projects in Old Orchard Beach, Maine, and we redid the whole games area in Kingsburg Amusement Park in Kingsburg, New Jersey, where the arcade games were floating down the street.